And now, with the following collection of ghoulish sounds, you can make your own sounds terrifying and terrible. <laughs> We love Friday the 13th movies. I believe that the only real Friday the 13th movie is Friday the 13th Part 4. Not only does it have Crispin Glover in it, yep. it also has Corey, Corey Feldman. Feldman. Now, I will say that Part 6 is also a Friday the 13th movie in the pure sense. Those are the only two. When you think of Friday the 13th, those are the only two movies you can really think of. Number one, his mom's the killer. His mom did it? What? <gasps> Number two, he doesn't have the hockey mask. No. Number bad. three, he doesn't get the hockey mask until what, the last 15 minutes of the film? Yeah, it's at the closing of the movie. Um, part five, it's Jason, not Jason is not even in the movie. He's not the killer, he's not... Okay. Part seven, it still takes place in Crystal Lake, and it's still Jason, he's got the, the hockey blood. mask. It's Jason versus Carrie is exactly what they did. Part eight, Jason takes a boat trip. Not Jason takes Manhattan. Jason takes a boat trip. It says he's in Manhattan, but he's not in Manhattan. No, they didn't film it in New York. He's in Manhattan for like 15 minutes. For some ungodly reason, they never explain, he turns into a baby after getting soaked in toxic waste. I am not making this up. If you don't believe me, go watch the absolutely terrible Jason takes Manhattan. Fast forward straight to the end, you'll see what I'm talking about. It is worth seeing him uppercut that guy's head off. <laughs> That was so bizarre. That was the most awesome part of that movie to me. But the head pops off like a basketball and actually bounces off a dumpster. It was it was so bizarre that, that they never go from Jason being a little kid back. You just back no, no like, explanation. Part nine, the first thing they do, blow Jason up. Then they take his pieces and the corner, for some reason, is compelled to eat his heart. Retroactive continuity. At the end. Freddy's glove comes out of the ground and pulls Jason's mask in. Somebody the in the theater took their full, large drink when that happened, and they threw it at the screen in human and custom. <laughs> they're like, oh, just that mad at it. So part 10 takes place oh, yeah. in they space. You know, there's a great part where it cryogenically freezes this girl and shatters her. That was awesome. Just, yeah. He just wanted his machete. That was funny. Robo ninja yeah. sex doll. Robot, robot, uh, cyber. <laughs> there were only two <laughs> movies that actually fit the stereotype that people think of when they think of Friday the 13th, which is part four and part six. If you want to see a Friday the 13th movie, you're going to get part four and part six. Now, I love part four because to me, it is everything that you expect from a Friday the 13th movie. It is Hella gory and violent. I mean, like crazy amounts of gore on the on screen. Disgusting. And there's tons of nudity for no reason. Nudity. Uh, nudity. You have teens. You've got Jason bumping teens off one by one. You have a great ending. You've got two batshit insane celebrities. It is my favorite series and one of my all-time favorites. It's the one I've seen the most and one I always go to. I really liked it, but I still kind of had that vibe that Jason could just be a mortal man. Even when he takes the machete into his head and falls down on the handle, the hilt goes straight through his eyes. It's disgusting. And he gets up. I agree with you on so much about part four. I think six might have been one of the first ones I ever saw. And uh, I think four might have been the first one I ever saw. That's I, I kind of like, who's your favorite Batman? Well, you know, some people are like, Adam West. <laughs> you know, no, but I'm so I say Adam even, West. Even Adam West <laughs> It's very Frankenstein, the way that they come to life in the beginning. Like, like the kills are, are stuff that a person cannot do, you know? Yeah, <laughs> he folds the sheriff, you know, like a pretzel, crushes him. He... So this is the reason that I don't like sex. And I'm not saying I go to, I watch horror movies for a movie. I watch Friday 13th. I, mean, I, I watched Friday 13 for gore and nudity. You expect it. That is the reason that those movies exist. So, there is no nudity. There's not a single nude scene in part six. I just want to sound like a total horn dog. <laughs> I don't care about that. I actually prefer cinema. Let me be clear about that. But the other part of it is that the gore that is on screen is all very tame. True. And then all the violence is just about off screen. And what I think happened was there was this heyday where you have movies like Reanimator and Evil Dead 2. That was a major studio movie. That was yes. about Paramount. But they got by because it wasn't widely known that, that you, like you say, you come to that movie expecting yeah. it. I think the MPAA were expecting this no. is the type of movie this is. We're going to have to cut it down. And eventually. our ratings meant a lot more back then, I think. You 
know, there wasn't a PG-13 rating, so when, right. you, when you went, it was kind of like the extreme where now there's the PG-13. I think by the time the Part 6 came out, the PG-13 existed, because Indiana Jones and the, and the Temple of Doom and Gremlins were the two movies that kind of forced them and coerced them yeah. into making the PG-13. Yeah. And I think that might have been before Part 6. So when they got to Part 6, the MPAA was really strict on your rating. The amount of violence they would show on show. screen, yeah. and I think they cut back. You could see it in all the horror films at that point. They ratcheted it down on it and made it, made it more straight. And that was what made them fun. I mean, I appreciate Horshack. <laughs> you get to see Horshack. <laughs> Mr. Kata, I'm dead. Horshack drops an F-bomb and... He smashes the shovel over Jason's head mm -hmm. in the graveyard no. scene. And Jason turns, turns around and looks at him and... <laughs> rips his I, heart. I admit that I like the whole, you know, rotting disgusting Jason. Yeah, they got worms crawling on his eyes. That was, you know, that was hideous. That, that, that Excellently done. I think Tommy's character is awesome. Yeah, Tommy Jarvis's character is the only, the only character that the Jason the continuous in the, in the series. Yeah. I mean, they had a couple others, but they always bump them off like within the first five minutes. I hope that someday that they'll, this will come back around again and we'll see another Jason versus Tommy. He impales one of the dudes on a tree branch. The guy comes at him. He slings him. Face first face first into a tree branch, and then when the dude falls away, there's a smiley face on the, on the tree. It had these little little bits of humor yeah. to it. The couple with their car that breaks down, and that, that feels like that you could have cut that scene from the movie and the movie would have been fine. It didn't add anything to the story. That's one of the, that's what I'm getting at. It's one of the humor effects, all right? The, he jabs the dude in the, in the nuts or whatever with the, the spear off the fence from the graveyard. Flings him over his shoulder and, and the guy just flies up in the air. The girl in the car, which I think might have been the wife, the wife of the director, actually. All right, and you know she also like tries to offer Jason money or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And he, he spears her down into the mud. Okay. Yeah. And you see the Amex card float by, and of course, invariably, somebody in the audience, you don't leave home without it. You know. To me, they they did that crap on purpose to kind of wink and a nod, they knew what they were doing. There is something I think we can both agree on though, 100%. Which is? Halloween 3 sucks. <laughs> yes it does. You Halloween try, 3, you know uh, that one? I try not to watch any scary movies. <laughs> <laughs> he's too scared. Due to a uh, certain... He's very, so, he's very the, scary. What happens in Halloween 3, tell me? Do you know I, that one? I don't, I don't, I don't really watch scary movies. Just, just, just like give, me, give, give me what you think happens. I think Halloween 3, most likely Michael Myers, right? That's the guy? Michael Myers is the character, the bad guy from Halloween. Don't, don't yes. say it, don't say it. Okay. So Michael Myers most likely would um, kill people on Halloween. So, Michael Myers would kill people. Michael Myers does not appear in Halloween 3 at all. It has not nothing to do with it. It's not even mentioned. It doesn't even take place in the town. None of the characters. Halloween 3 is about this family. And let's sing it together. Six more days till Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. Six more days till Halloween, Silver Shamrocks. Okay, you hear that like a hundred times in the movie. <laughs> yeah, they count down to Halloween with that commercial that they play incessantly in the movie. And that is the one thing that sticks out in my oh, mind. Oh, right, so you want to gouge my eardrum that was ice pick. That was more horrific than anything else they put on screen. <laughs> okay, so Halloween 3 is Silver Shamrock is this company that wants to take over the world? I guess. Somehow or another, they, they're intending to do horrible things to people by creating masks that, Full head masks that, that, will, that will kill you when you put them on. On Halloween. On Halloween. <laughs> and so this guy slowly That's discovered this conspiracy. That's the plot. By the way, this is directed by Toby Hooper, who made Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Just gotta point that out. Ugh. It, it, I, I challenge you, if you're watching this, to mention another movie other than Texas Chainsaw Massacre that Toby Hooper has made. Another movie he's made that's good. They'll, they'll, uh, somebody will get you with, with that. I, I want to know. There's going to be an obscure movie out there that we haven't seen. Do fucking just share an obscure movie. Tell me, tell me another movie that Toby Hooper is responsible for as at least director, bare minimum. Not producer. Producer doesn't count. Director, <laughs> screenwriter, director and screenwriter, like Chainsaw, whatever you want to say. Other than Texas Chainsaw Massacre, name one. I'm all ears. He had that one flick with the chick from Star Trek. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> anyway, 
So it could have stopped right there. It could have been that. That's not a bad premise for a horror film, especially for the '80s. Yeah. You can really lower your expectations. But, but as the dude goes investigating, he gets. I know I'm gonna spoil the movie for you. He gets betrayed by the chick because she's actually working for him. The chick who's helping him investigate is actually working for the company. She's a robot. And they're all. There's all these androids, these robots, these people who look like humans that are built by the company. And you're. I'm like. Your plan to take over the world was masked, but you have fucking androids. Yeah, yeah. Why not use the robots? Come on, what are we doing here? The movie is awful, and the, one of the only reasons I bring it up is that for some reason that I could not possibly explain. I go looking to find movies that I've never seen. On these lists, I keep seeing Halloween 3, and they're like, Halloween 3, doesn't that Michael Myers, it subverts your... No, it doesn't subvert my anything. I'm sorry. It's that, crap. That movie is garbage. It doesn't matter that they went a different direction. It's bullshit. If you had to administer a rape job to your bowel-infected grandfather... Oh, no, no, no. Go, go ahead and just, just say New Gingrich. <laughs> His hairy, crap-encrusted butthole. His hairy, crap-encrusted dude. <laughs> <laughs> so what'd you think? Did, did you agree with us? You know, was I right? Was he right? I'm right. I'm correct. Whatever he says, I'm correct. Don't forget. Subscribe. Comment. Comment below. Subscribe. Show us some love. Tell us. Tell us that I'm right.